Do you know someone who is currently dealing with Alzheimer's or dementia? Did you know that this is the sixth deadliest cause for death in the United States? Did you know that there are also over 3 million cases this year? Well, let's talk about it. Hashtag show purple to end ALZ 2022. Hey everyone, oh, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rochelle from Rochelle Handmade Designs, and in this video, I am collaborating with Michelle from The Real Michelle Sews Again on Instagram and Michelle Sews Again here on YouTube, okay? Now, before we get started, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe button, and also turn on the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. So without further ado, if you are new to the channel, welcome. Hello. Ciao, guten tag, hola, aloha, wa guan, konnichiwa, bonjour. Now, if you are returning, you know what to do. Go ahead and get you some coffee, some tea, some water, some juice, whatever you want to drink, and come on and chill with me as I take you on this pattern review for the jumpsuit that I have on. You wouldn't want to miss it because it is gorgeous. <laughs> All right. Now, let's go ahead and get right on into this video. So I'm not going to give you a full background story of um, Alzheimer's disease because this is not what this video is about. This video is more about bringing awareness to the disease. Now Michelle from Michelle Sews Again, you can go over to her YouTube channel. She has a whole list and she did a whole vlog video of what the disease is about. So I'm not going to tell you everything um, about Alzheimer's. I do have some family. Um, that have suffered from Alzheimer's disease. I have three people that, you know, family that have passed on since then. I did a video last year, so I don't want to revisit all of those things, but I will touch bases a little bit on the disease. Maybe some things that you have not heard or know about AD, which stands for Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Like number one, there are seven stages of Alzheimer's disease. So you have your uh, no impairment stage, which is the first stage. Then you have your mouth, uh, your very mouth decline, which is, you know, early stages of dementia. Then you have your mouth decline. After that, you have your moderate decline, your very moderate decline. And then you also have your very, very moderate, moderate decline. So there's seven stages and normally with dementia or Alzheimer's, they last um, from four, mo the life expense expectancy is four to 20 years. Now, the early onset of Alzheimer's disease starts in your early 30s and can last all the way up to your mid 60s. It is said that once you are diagnosed, you have four to nine years to live. Now, this is where it depends on the person is what I'm gonna say. They, the doctors will give you four to nine years, but my grandfather who passed away in 2013, I'm sorry, 2014, he passed away in early 2014. I was able to see him right before he passed away, a couple of months before he passed away in 2013 when I went home to California. And he lived with the disease and was in stage seven, which is the highest stage that you could be in for roughly about 11 years, okay? so. I found out that he had Alzheimer's when I was really young. I want to say I was about 15, 16 years old when I um, found out he had Alzheimer's. It was onset of about 1998, I want to say, and he did not pass away until 2013. That is a very long time to live with the disease. Moving on, my great grandmother also has this disease that she passed away in 1991 from Alzheimer's and dementia. She went through all the stages as well. And she passed away in, like I said, in 1991, when I was really, really young, I don't know how long she dealt with the disease. My mother currently lives with this disease. She is currently in stage five of this disease. And she's been living with this disease since I was the tender age of 17. So, with that being said, um, she's been living with it for over 20 years. So that's why I say the time is basically case by case is what I'm going to say. All right. Now, 
that I talked enough about uh, So Purple to NALZ, which is the hashtag that Michelle got going on. She is doing a collaboration with a lot of people almost every day. So if you have not heard, if you go over to Ruin, which is at Yorkshire So Girl, she even says it. Michelle is crazy to do this every single day. It's like September vlog style for her basically to collaborate with so many of the sewers in the sewing community on you know hashtag so purple to NALZ to bring awareness to Alzheimer's disease. Now Michelle's father he passed away I want to say roughly about two years ago Bruce uh, Walker he passed away from this disease about two years ago Michelle talked about it on her channel also, you can get involved by sewing something purple. It does not have to be a garment. It could be anything. If you could sew a pocket square that's purple, sew it. Go ahead and um, take a picture of it. Place it on Instagram. Tag Michelle in it and she is giving away prizes. Also, for every entry, she will donate $1 up to $500 to bring awareness to Alzheimer's disease, which I thought that was amazing as well. I will also put um, that up on the screen so you are able to see what you need to do in order for you to get involved. All right, so also don't forget to check out Sarah, who you will see tomorrow as she will show what she created for hashtag so purple to NALZ 22. Make sure you put that 22 on your post in the hashtag on Instagram, all right? So Sarah from Naughty Gnome, which I will put Ruin and Sarah's link in the description box below so you could go to their channels and see what they both created. Now Michelle, I'm sorry, but Sarah is tomorrow, Ruin was yesterday, all right? Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into what I sold to celebrate hashtag so purple to in ALZ22 and also my birthday May. My birthday was yesterday on the 8th. I am actually filming this on my birthday the 8th because I wanted to wear this for my birthday outing as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into this pattern review. All right, so let's talk about the pattern that I chose to do for hashtag so purple in ALZ, I chose Mimi G Simplicity 8060. Now listen, you guys, this is a lot of pattern pieces and if you seen my video over the weekend, I said pray for me. <laughs> this, I'm gonna tell you guys when I get to the pattern pieces, how many pattern pieces it's in this envelope in order to create this jumpsuit. Now I knew this was in celebration of the loved ones that I lost as well as my birthday outfit. So I wanted to do something special. And also, I don't sew a lot of pieces with a, I don't sew a lot of garment with a lot of pieces. So here and there, um, more pattern pieces than eight to 10. It's not like back to back to back to back. I don't do it that way, but I did want to make this something special. Um, to show my appreciation for hashtag so purple to NALZ and to bring awareness to Alzheimer's disease. All right. Now, for the pattern description, this is a Mrs. Jumpsuit in two lengths. You have your short length, which I want to say is view B, which goes a little above your knees. And then you have your longer length that go all the way down. Now, me personally, I made the longer length, which is view A. And I just rolled it up at the bottom and basically threw on my boots. <laughs> basically because it was windy outside when I took these photos. So yes, that's what I did for my pattern. Once again, it's Simplicity 8060. Let's go ahead and talk about the skill level. So the skill level for Simplicity 8060, Mimi G, I'm gonna rate this as I'm gonna rate it as intermediate sewist. However, it's more advanced sewist, to be honest with you. I'm gonna say that you need to know how to do a fly front zipper. Even though Mimi walk you through how to do it and everything, it can still be challenging and difficult. Now, I have sewn many pants with fly fronts, so I didn't have that issue, and I have a different way of doing a fly front than what Mimi shows in the tutorial, so I did it my way, and it still came out exactly what Mimi shows in the tutorial, all right? Let's talk about notions used. So for this pattern, you need, I wanna say nine three eighths inch um, buttons. You also need a nine inch exposed zipper. 
or all-purpose zipper and you need a snap now for me I did not have three eighths inch buttons you guys know I've been using everything from my stash so I use three fourths inch buttons now let me tell you I use bigger buttons for a reason simply because I didn't read I'm just gonna be honest I thought it said a half an inch buttons or five eighths of an inch buttons and after going through my stash and I said I need it nine I had nine of these buttons and I wasn't gonna go to Joanne's to get ripped off for some buttons so I just used what was available in my stash and it worked perfectly to accent all the bright colors on my fabric now one thing with speaking of fabric let's talk about fabric use so the fabric use for this uh, pattern I actually use 100% Ankara print this fabric is from wax prints lace and more if she has any left I will link it in the description box below and put it up on the screen but I do believe that this fabric is sold out but I will definitely check for you all right also speaking of fabric uh, hashtag so purple to NALZ yes your garment must be purple predominant predominantly purple it does not have to be solid purple so it could be something like this where the main color is purple and you can have different things so you guys know I'm not one who sold a lot of solids so I asked before I did this would it be great and would it be okay if I used an Ankara fabric with you know a lot of accents of purple and she said yes it would be perfectly fine so you can do the same thing as well let's talk about pattern pieces okay so for this pattern it is 19 pattern pieces okay listen it was a struggle and it wasn't a struggle as if it was difficult it wasn't difficult at all I took three days to do this jumpsuit so I cut the pattern one day I sewed the bodice another day and then I sewed the pant portion of the jumpsuit the third day um, and hemmed and all that good stuff so to be honest with you the portion that took the longest is the bodice not because of the button it's just more pieces for the bodice to be honest with you versus the pants now for this jumpsuit you may ask I have an issue with pants I'm going to talk about that in a different video on what I do for pants because I know when I did the video for all them pants you guys asked what is my strategy for pants so I'm going to talk about that in another video when I sew pants okay and I have a whole pant series that I want to do next month in the month of uh, October so just stay tuned for that all right <laughs> all right so it's 19 pattern pieces in order to do this jumpsuit let's talk about pattern sizing so for this pattern it comes in I want to say three pattern envelopes maybe two two so for the first pattern you have 6 to 14 and for the second envelope the bigger size you have 16 to 24 now the size that I cut for this jumpsuit believe it or not I cut a size 12 all the way down but I had to make modifications to the hips so for a size 12 the bodice gives you a 43 so you guys know that it fits me perfectly for 43 um, I did not have to size up the bust or any of that stuff the waist was a lot bigger than you know I want it but it's supposed to be a little slouchy and loose fitting so I was perfectly fine with that the hips now for the hips for size 12 it gives me a 43 now I did have to size it up to a 48 inch hip to give me room because this is not a stretch fabric so I need it 48 because my hips is a 46 so all together the measurements for my jumpsuit is a 43 bust a 39 waist and a 48 hip and it fits perfectly okay now the waist is a little big I understand that but you also have a drawstring so you could tie it and you also have a snap so it worked in my favor very very well all right let's talk about modifications did I make any modifications to this jumpsuit no I didn't make any modifications because I didn't feel like I needed to it had all the details that I needed because I had an inspiration photo which I will put up and I wanted to mirror it as much as possible the only thing that I did not do um, because I was pressed for time was make the tabs I have drafted tabs before when I did uh, Butterick 6702 when I did the um, 
Battle of the Shirt Dresses. That was the first dress in the Battle of the Shirt Dress. I showed you guys how to draft tab. I'll put it in, in the description box below on how to draft tab as well as um, flaps. Um, I'll put it in the description box below, but I could have went ahead and used my drafted tab and so on the tab like you see in the inspiration photos, but I did not feel that I needed to do all that. I like to take inspiration photos, but I like to make it my own as well. So um, I also already had the fabric when I seen the inspiration photo. So it was perfectly to go ahead and do this jumpsuit. All right, let's talk about did it look like the photos or the drawing on the pattern envelope? Of course, yes it did. It looked exactly like the photos in the drawing on the pattern envelope. The only difference is the fabric. That's it, all right? Let's talk about are the instructions easy to follow? So, I'm gonna say yes, the instructions are easy to follow because for the main portion of me constructing the jumpsuit, for the bodice, I use a lot of the instructions instead of Mimi tutorial. For a couple of reasons, simply because my laptop was upstairs, I was too lazy to go and get my laptop, um, to look at the video, my phone was upstairs, I had some training courses to do, so it was easier for me to stop what I was doing, look at the instructions when I can, when I had a 15 minute break or a 30 minute break um, in between, you know, modules that I was doing for, you know, whole new career. But um, yeah, I looked at the instructions more than I followed along with Mimi. I, the only time that I actually followed along with Mimi is basically I was doing the casing part. That's what it was. I was doing the casing part and the instructions are clear but not so clear so just be mindful when you do that okay that portion of the casing that's pretty much the only time that i remember following along with mimi g's tutorial now mimi g's tutorial is great um, but just be mindful that sometimes she tells you to use a different seam allowance than what's in the instructions i don't know why um but yeah but mimi's tutorial is great the instructions is great I'm just gonna put it like that, all right? Let's talk about likes and dislikes. I do not have any dislikes for this pattern outside of the number of pattern pieces. That is a dislike and it can put someone who's new off. However, I would do the pants again, just the pants, not the bodice again, or I will do this again in a two piece, okay? So do I plan on doing it again or would I sew it again? Absolutely, I would sew this again. Um, if I needed to and if I wanted to, right? <laughs> Let's talk about first time experiences. Did I have any first time experiences? Um, no, no. Um, this type of jumpsuit is a first time experience, but it's not the first time I have made a jumpsuit. It's not the first time that I have done a fly front. Um, it's no, none of that, none of that. So no, I don't have any first time experiences while constructing this jumpsuit. All right, so would I recommend this pattern to others? Of course, yes. If you are at least, at least, listen to what I'm saying. If you are at least an intermediate sewist and you can tackle things like a snap and zippers and putting on buttons and all of that good stuff, I would say take your chance. You can't stay in that beginner zone forever. Go outside of your comfort zone. If you have been sewing for at least a year and a half, go past those beginner patterns and get yourself more experience into more of the intermediate patterns, all right? Um, but yeah, I would recommend this to my intermediate or even advanced sewers, all right? I would not recommend this to a beginner, all right? If you're a true beginner, I wouldn't recommend it to you, all right? <laughs> All right, so for my pattern rating, I'm giving this pattern a five out of five. Even though it's a lot of pieces, listen, it came together very, very well. So that's it for my pattern review for Simplicity 8060, the Mimi G jumpsuit. I hope you enjoy. I also hope you enjoy considering making something. Support the hashtag so purple to end ALZ22. Also, if you are not a sewist and you just like looking at my videos and you would 
uh, rather donate you can donate you can look at Michelle's video so just go over to Michelle's video so you can see how you can get involved and donate if you if your heart lends to donating instead of creating something all right so I hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe turn on the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video so I'll catch you in the next video and as always keep sewing Working a nine to five, I had to go and feed the guys. Nobody did it right, I had to show them how to grind. I had to be the hog, this is the life I live for God. Taking a step at a time, we going up, we headed to Mars. Taking them chances, making decisions, you know I'm never gonna lie. Till you let go, I'm not being all of them, who you gonna be inside? I cannot fake it, I gotta face it, I gotta do the time.